we are going to put together a working version of the simplex method. So the problem we are trying to solve is, again, minimize C transpose x subject to ax equal to b, x greater than or equal to 0, and a, b, c are problem data. We assume that the rank of a is m, so a has full row rank. And we start with a basic feasible solution x star determined by some basis b. Now the question of finding this initial basic feasible solution will be dealt with later. For now, we just assume that we have such a solution at the beginning. So in two previous videos, we addressed the steps in this loop. If in the solution x star, all the basic variables are non-zero, then we can tell if it is optimal or not. If it is optimal, we stop. Otherwise, we find an improving direction. And we saw how we could find one such direction. If we can move in that direction indefinitely, then we can say that the problem is unbounded and we stop. Otherwise, we move in that direction and we'll eventually hit another basic feasible solution. And we'll set that solution to be our new x star and start over. This scheme works as long as in every iteration, all the basic variables in the basic feasible solution are non-zero. So complication arises when some basic variable in our basic feasible solution is zero. So it could happen right at the beginning the basic feasible solution at the beginning doesn't have all basic variables non-zero. Or when we move to a new basic feasible solution, we have some basic variables that are zero. The reason why this scheme works when there is no degenerate basic feasible solution is as follows. Each time we move to a new basic feasible solution, the objective function value decreases. Since there are only finitely many basic feasible solutions, and each time we go to one that has a better objective function value, eventually this has to stop. So how do we deal with the case when we have degenerate basic feasible solutions? Well, there are a couple of options. One is use what is known as an anti-cycling rule. Cycling is when you go back to a basis that you have encountered before. The other one is use perturbation, which we have been developing in the last video. So instead of solving this problem, we are going to solve the problem ax equal to b prime in the constraints. And b prime is going to be b plus a sub b times the column vector epsilon up to epsilon to the m for some very small positive epsilon. And we solve this instead. So we can still start with this basis b, because if x star is a basic feasible determined by basis b for the original system, b also determines a basic feasible solution for the new system, ax equal to b prime x greater than equal to 0. And we solve this problem instead. We can again check if x star is optimal. Now, the nice thing is, in this second step, the new basic feasible solution, as we saw in the video discussing perturbation, still has all basic variables non-zero. And so there's a unique basis for this. That means every basic feasible solution encountered in this loop, when we solve this perturbed problem, we have the nice property that we are looking for, is that every basic variable is going to be non-zero. Now the question is, when it stops at the optimal solution for the perturbed problem, what do we get? Well. We saw in the perturbation video that B still determines a basic feasible solution for the original problem. And B still defines this dual feasible Y star. So Y star is going to be given by this. Now note that it doesn't depend on the perturbed vector B prime. So Y star is still a feasible solution for the dual of P without the prime. And so this y star will satisfy complementary slackness with the x star determined by b for the original system ax equal to b. And what this means is, as long as epsilon is small enough, so that every basis that determines a basic feasible solution for the primed system, it also determines a basic feasible solution for the original system. If epsilon is chosen in such a way that that is the case, at the end of this algorithm, the conclusion will also apply to the original problem. So if we have found optimal solution, that final basis, 
B will determine an optimal solution for the original problem. And if we have found something that improves indefinitely, showing unboundedness, that direction will also show that the unperturbed problem is unbounded. And that is a working version of the simplex method that we are looking for.